M0FXP, welcome to my beginner's guide on the Yesu FT60 ham radio. So it's a dual band radio, which means VHF, UHF, but it does actually receive right up to a thousand megahertz. Also receives air band, no problem at all. It will receive GMRS, PMR, all those kind of frequencies, but you're not going to be able to transmit. Although 446 PMR, it there is transmit, but the spacing's all wrong anyway. So really, it's a VHF, UHF ham radio. Unfortunately, you cannot listen to normal broadcast radio, so music, BBC. But um, typing in the air band, it's nice and easy. You just go one, three, three, eight, five, zero. And I find that the five kilohertz spacing's nice and simple. So let's look at the basics first. So when you turn it on, you just, the middle knob there, just turn it on. You've got a proper on off knob, which is very refreshing and volume. And if your light isn't coming on, press the bottom one here. Now, if that doesn't work, go to F, then set. That gives you the settings menu. Turn until you get to 24. And then press the F again. And make sure you select toggle and you can select that with the, the channel knob. So the top right knob. And then back out with the F and then hit the PTT. And if you press the bottom now, it will toggle the light on and off. And you look, you're even getting some air band there, even though it's, you know, just on the included Yesu antenna, which works great if you ask me. But you're, you're always going to get best reception if you go out and about on a hill or if you, if you connect. It's trying to get it there. Squelch is at the bottom here. If I turn that right down, that's your squelch. And you're always going to get better connection, you know, if you use your external antenna in your loft um, or if you get out on a hill. Buying a more expensive antenna, I find, makes no difference. But let me just quickly show you that squelch again. So the bottom one, if you turn up until the noise goes, and if you put a ham radio frequency, one, four, five, all the zeros. And then look, squelch down and squelch up. And then look, changing the channel like so. Get it up right again. Squelch up till the noise goes. You can change channel, you know, frequency using the up and down arrow as well. Or will turn the knob. Now remember, we're in what they call VFO mode now. So VFO mode, if I just press this, you'll see the screen says memory, then VFO. In VFO mode, you can type a frequency. Uh, so that's what we call frequency mode or VFO mode. And you can see that you can buy a cradle charger for this, or you can just charge straight into the DC input there. And just lift that out of the way. Just goes in the bottom one, look. Uh, if, and if you look at your the cable that you plug in that, because these have both got yellow inside, but the top one is for an external microphone, and it's one of these single pin type microphones. But also that same type pin is the cable that's used for programming as well. Pro, you know, using Chirp and Yesu programming, RT systems, that kind of stuff. Not sure if I found a Yesu program yet. I'm, I'll keep looking for that. But I think there's a couple of other free ones out there as well. So, you know, Chirp, but Chirp does the job and we make some separate videos on that. So it's nice that it's a backlit keyboard, very easy to see. Even when the light is off, it's actually very easy to see in sunlight. Um, and um, you've got a nice big speaker there. The speaker is better than the actual speaker mic that I was just showing there. So, and you've got a couple of battery options. You've got the NICAD option. You've got the lithium battery option there as well. So keep going with the basics. Turn on volume, change channel, squelch. Then you've got on this side, you've got your PTT. And you've got a couple of buttons here as well. Uh, so let's just press one. That's turning the squelch off and that's now turning the light on and off. But you've got two buttons here. If you go into the settings that you can program P1 and, and P2 as well. Now, the other nice thing about the way they've designed this radio is you can pretty much do everything from the keypad. So if we just type in, for example, one, four, five, six hundred. 
that's GB3WR. Now, notice that the minus shift has appeared automatically, and that's because it's got what we call automatic repeater shift. So it basically adds it in for you, save you having to do it yourself. So if you go F set, and then keep look, at, look for that, go to the A, and just make sure that, that is turned on. There it is, that automatic repeater shift, press F, and it's on, look. Okay, and then you can just back out. Just press the P. It doesn't transmit when you push when you back out of the menu that way. So it adds the shift in for us, but we can manually manually select the shift. Why do you need a shift? Because repeaters operate on two different frequencies: one for receive and one for transmit. So if we go F then four, for example, F then four, that's that's a minus you're seeing there. We can change that. See that we get off means it's a simplex channel. Then you've got minus and plus shift. So I'll leave it on minus, but the explanation is that when it's off and I press the PTT now, it's going to transmit on that frequency. When it's a shift, then it's, there's going to be a shift. If you go menu, F, then set, I think it's 45, is it? In the S's it will be. Yeah, shift, and then press F again. That's the amount that it's going to shift. That's actually 60 kilohertz, because it's not point. Uh, but on 70 sems, it'll be 7.6. 70 sems is like 400 megahertz. So it tells, the, it tells it how much it's going to go plus or minus uh, when you set that. And that's quite important. So to get this repeater working, we would have to go put the frequency in. We've got the minus shift. We need a tone that opens up the repeater. So we go F, then number one, F, one. And look, if we turn that tone, we've now got a tone. Tone squelch means that the tone is applied on receive as well. But I always just use it on transmit because it's just to open up the repeater. But if you do both, it means you don't get all that hash sound. So you've set the tone, okay? But you still need to set the tone frequency. There's different frequencies for different repeaters. If you go F, code and it is 94.8 hertz so i know it all seems daunting but this is the way it works f so now if we if we were outside and go m0 fxb test that it should open the repeater let's go out and have a quick test and then we'll come back in and get carry on going through all right just a quick one my dog's out here as well and i just heard the, the repeater blip up so it's receiving it just on a rubber duck it's about 10 miles from me really nice loud speaker on this really when you're out in the sun you don't see the orange light you just see the lcd m0 fxb test there you are you can see i'm making it fine and we can actually save that as well just by holding down the fw key bottom right so back inside we just hold down the fw it takes you straight to an empty channel if you turn back you'll see the full channels so you go to the MT and then just hold down the FW again. And, and your memory's in there. And it's already it's actually given me the option to add a name now, so I might as well. So that was GB3WR. So you turn the top knob like so. It's a bit boring, but G. Okay, G up with the arrow down. Finding backwards is the quickest way. B. I think up with the numbers. Three. And you go backwards with the down arrow. And then WR, wasn't it? Oops. Up. Up. See the way it's working, can't you? really clear display it's, it's, it's actually a really nice radio to use once you're set then just hold down the fw so now we're in vfo mode we can type frequencies but if we go into memory mode vm here and then it's taken us straight to the channel that we've just added it always does that look and that that's you know, I think that's a you know very easy radio to program. Now, scanning wise, if we say we're in memory mode now, if we hold the up arrow, it will just start to scan all our memories. Now, I've added quite a few in here using RT systems, where you can bulk import lots of channels. 
Uh, you do have to put this radio into what they call clone mode to do that. Um, so anyway, let's just stop that by pressing the arrow. If we go into VFO and we want to scan memories, let's just say we want to scan airband. So we just go one, one, zero. And hold the up. I'll do a separate video. You can actually limit the scan so it goes, say, from 110 to 140 megahertz instead of just going through the whole lot because, you know, it's a thousand megahertz. But it's nice and fast. You can change the step as well. If you go F set, because, you know, the, the step is important. That's the gaps between the channels. We go F, then set, show step on menu 49. Then you press F again. And it's on auto now, but look, you can choose different steps that you like, okay? I pretty much like, I actually like 6 point, 6 point, um, five, 6 point, get it right, 6.25. Uh, but anyway, I'll put it on 5 for now, so. Sometimes you have to change a step just so you can access the, the frequency you're trying to access. There's a band button here as well. So you can cycle through the bands, and like I said, it goes up to virtually a thousand megahertz, and let's, and it automatically selects AM as well for the air band. The speaker on this is lovely. So hopefully we we'll get some activity on my hubnet node. You've got home channels that you can set. You've got priority channels that you can set. It's got this cool feature called uh, when you hold down the uh, actually on here it's the two. Uh, well, it will send out a DCS code and receive, and it's sort of tracking people. And if they're if they've got the same setting, same DCS code, it will actually receive receive you know that they're near you. Let me just grab mine. I might be able to do it now. You do need to be on the same frequency, but it says that says out of range. Okay, and if you wait, they'll beep to each other, and you can set the intervals in range, and then this will beep back to the Yesu. And now they're saying they're both in range of each other. I think that's a really cool feature. It has this paging feature as well. Never used paging, so I have to learn all about that. Uh, to set your TX power, you go F and then 3. So you just do that again. There it is there. F3, because you've got shortcuts on all these here. There's your programmable buttons that you decide what they do. So we just... Did F3 and it's taken us straight to setting the power, look, high, mid and low. Okay, press F to come out. And what else we got here? If we press F then one, sorry, not one, the up arrow, it allows us to change a megahertz. You see that? F, like so, and it's allowing me to really change in, in large megahertz there. So I think it's pretty handy. Leave the VX, that's the VX3, by the way. Lovely little set in the background. Just going to show you how to take the battery off, in case you've never done this. So it's quite stiff, I would say. It's a big clip, no problem with the clip, but cool. When you pull this down, it's, it's really stiff to pull down. Mind you don't squash on the screen. So I did that, and I'm lifting up that, and then look, it just lifts out. This is one battery we've got here, and there's a another one there. So that's the original, the NIMH. That's the lithium one, and then we bought the extra. See that clips in? It's quite stiff. The extra drop-in charger there, which you don't really need to be honest. Uh, turn it back on. Shows the voltage as you turn on. Then we'll put on the backlight. I showed you how to do that earlier. There are memory banks in this device. You hold down the band button. And then you can, uh, I've not used them actually. Band. I definitely need to learn on that one. But there are memory banks there. What's all this band stuff? Plus and minus. All. I'll leave it on all. <laughs> uh, let's go back. So yeah, need to learn about that. But I think there's 10 banks of memories. Mine actually does transmit on GMRS and PMR frequencies. I'm not saying do that, but it actually does, whether it's been opened up. I mean, I bought it used. And you can actually see the date when this was made if you open the battery. And just look here. Let's see if we can focus in. 
So, you know, just check out your serial number and there is a calculator online to work out when this device was, was built. So I think that's about it for a beginner's guide. I mean, there's some more features here. There's this emergency automatic ID system. You can listen to the, the weather channels. Of course, you can name all of the channels and it's one touch access to the NOAA weather channels. It's also got mono band and memory only operation modes. Of course, RF squelch. Uh, the programmable keys, ARTS that we looked at, DTM, DTMF, four, three, four, five, five, zero. So basically, if I need to get into my node, I can just press the PTT and start to type DTMF. That definitely works really well. Oh, looks like we actually got in there for a second. Um, the battery, you know, 1400 is standard, but I've got the, uh, which is the NIMH, they call it, uh, the NICAD one, and then lots of accessories. You can buy a little case that holds the, you know, your ordinary AA batteries, and so on and so on. So the main thing is, you know, when you get it, turn it on. I would get the lamp on first, so you can see what you're doing, like so, and then VFO or memory. Yeah, go to VFO where it said where it doesn't say memory. Type what you want to listen to. That's the basics. You know, one, four, five, seven fifty is a repeater. If you want to listen to the planes, one, three. Up for me, eight five zero works. A lot of craft coming over. Uh, Marine one five six. You know, it's all there. And of course, all the ham bands and there's loads more memory. It's a thousand megahertz. Um, so, I, you know, it's an excellent device, completely recommended, solid, um, a lot better than some of the newer ones in certain ways. It's so solid and rugged. It's commercial. I call it I call it commercial quality um, walkie talkie fur. And you can pick these up, you know, £120. You'll get one of these. The way it's backlit at night, if you're in bed or you're in your tent or your caravan, and you've got this and it's all backlit. It's going to look beautiful while you're sat there scanning away and they don't make them like they used to so anyway that's it really if you haven't already please um subscribe to my channel as you know my channel we don't just do the latest and the newest radios like the yesu ftx1 that's been announced in may 2025 we go back we go back 20 years uh pretty much in my lifetime 20 30 years we go back and we've got radios here that, that we keep we don't sell them we keep them so that we can keep reviewing them. When people ask me questions, how do you do that? How do you do that? I can put it on the table here and I love doing it. Don't think I'm doing it just to make a video. I'm doing it because I'm enjoying every minute of it um, and enjoying it very much. And I highly recommend you get yourself an all-star node because with an all-star node, you can talk around the world. And what that is, is basically a box with a small radio in it that is connected to us another box within it for connecting to the internet and that links you to the world and i can just do a quick one here m0 fxb calling for an audio check let's get my tone on and then we'll do it so we'll go f squelch tone f oh a minute let's just go four three four that's better uh, there's someone there already but this this person's you know in scotland but the reason I'm getting him, and it sounds like a, a normal radio. Yeah, that it sounds like a normal radio is because the box I've got in my shack, uh, which is no bigger than say this box here. Okay, where the microphone came in. The box I've got in my shack with a radio inside it that's connected to the internet is sending out a, a normal radio. Inside that box is actually a Bofung. Uh, connected to a Raspberry Pi, and I must have seen a Raspberry Pi before. It looks like this. So imagine this here connected to a, a very cheap radio, like this. this. Is a very cheap radio here, very dusty, and uh, both from AAA. They actually work really well. So imagine that in a box that that sends out when it, it's got an SD card which is linking to the all-star system and that sends out a signal to every radio in my shack whether it's an expensive one or a cheap one and then everyone can chat to each other bye for now seven three